Hi, this is Red Jackal, and this is the first episode of a podcasty kind of series that I'm uh, starting where I talk about my experience with video games, like particular titles, and just like gaming experiences in general, or even with my family. So, if you're interested in uh, gaming stories, personal gaming stories, then I um, invite you to tune in. I'm probably going to be doing this weekly. I'd like to start this uh, first episode off post-Father's Day to talk about my uh, grandfather. We called him Sonny. And uh, I believe his actual name was John, but he passed away some time ago, so it's hard to remember some details about him. But Sonny was a real handyman. Um, He tinkered around with electronics, built models such as train and aircraft. He even had a huge diorama for miniature trains in his house that I remember in the basement my basement area, and uh, he just had various hobbies, and uh, he was kicking around quite well for a man in his uh, 60s or 70s, and I don't know what his main profession was in his early years, but in his retirement, he provided a service to people that I thought was the coolest thing ever, uh, which I'll go over in a bit. As far back as I can remember, my family was in the gaming. I mean, with the Atari arcades and then the NES, most people those days generally were. And uh, I do recall seeing my mother's side of the family playing games more, but um, I spent a lot of time with them up to a certain point in the beginning of my life. And that side of the family lived in North Carolina for a while, while my, uh, my grandfather and everyone else lived in Kentucky, which we did take occasional trips to. And it wasn't hard to see games wherever you went during that time in the early 90s, uh, especially in the like in the NES era. It seemed like a lot of places took the opportunity to sell a product with something from Nintendo Incorporated. And then there was coin-op machines, arcade cabinets, if you want to call them. And uh, it was common for those to be uh, present at like laundromats, skating rings, pizza parlors. There's probably other places that they were that I don't remember. Um, outside of just like the general arcades that you would visit. And uh, pizza places used to have the tabletop machines. And I remember playing Galaga a lot on them when I was really young. And even now, uh, I tend to associate pizza with retro gaming, and I'm sure a lot of people tend to do, or at least I see it online, um, and make a habit of going to Mod Pizza, for example, like uh, is, a, is a place I go to often now. Uh, with uh, like a root beer on the side after getting back from visiting a retro game store, which in um, Washington we still do have quite a few around, like even some that open up to cater to people who are into retro games. And uh, But in my youth, though, uh, I wasn't new to arcades, and I was taken to many different ones, especially by my father. And those, each, like, each of those different arcades carry their own special memories, which, uh, I may cover in, like, a different episode after this, since we're going over arcade machines in this one. Uh, now, during one of our trips to Kentucky, later in the 90s, my father decided to take me to a place my grandfather worked at. Um, but I don't recall if he mentioned what exactly it was, I just remember I was excited upon seeing everything when I walked in. Uh, and this was um, in Rag... I think it was in Radcliffe. Um, well, Radcliffe is where he lived, but I do believe the shop was also in the Radcliffe area um, in Kentucky, too. And it was a repair shop with uh, two floors, and the top floor was accessible from the front, which, if I remember correctly, may have not advertised what the exact business it was, like the exact repair type business it was, um, or given the impression that it was a different sort of repair shop. It may have just said that it was for repair, but um, people who knew him or, like, uh, I don't know how else he would have advertised the shop, really, but uh, people, he probably knew people who brought the machines in, or maybe he visited places that had machines that needed to be repaired. Um, but when we walked in, there were numerous arcade machines scattered about, 
um, various colors and sizes made uh, for a plethora of games. I believe there may have been uh, pinball machines and the kind of amusement machines scattered amongst them that you'd only specifically find in an arcade and not placed anywhere else. Um, like the usual arcade cabinets that you would find in like a, a restaurant or um, a laundromat, for instance. There were games I recognized and those I didn't. Um, likely from the 80s or even before that. Some of them had that curved, uh, like a wide curved wooden exterior or chunky looking parts on them with retro colors. Um, that you'd normally associate with the 70s. Uh, and it was like a little bit of heaven for me. Um, even if most of the machines were operational at the time. But I do remember that two or three of them were working. Uh, and I played around with them a bit. And I think they were from, some of them were uh, Capcom or SNK games. Um, after that though, I don't recall being able to visit that place much again. Um, but uh, sometime towards the 2000s, like the early 2000s, it might have been uh, before that, my uh, grandfather ended up getting a triple bypass and ended up with his right side paralyzed. Um, he couldn't even speak properly anymore, so he was put into a nursing home to kind of help rebuild, rehabilitate him. And like, uh, there are people there that can help, help take care of his uh, specific... Um, rehabilitation and uh, it was heartbreaking to see him in this state and the fact that he wouldn't probably be able to work on his various projects hobbies or anything else he loved again um, anything that he would be able to use his hands for um, well we we visited him as often as we could once we we did move to Kentucky um, after a while and he showed his happiness um, upon seeing us the best he could Eventually, uh, sometime before or after my family moved to Washington, uh, when I was in the middle of high school, he ended up passing away, unfortunately. And uh, as for my grandfather's coin-op repair shop, I'm not sure what happened to it after the incident with his health. In my late teens and onward, I ended up forgetting that we'd even visited such a place. Um, but childhood memories can often get clouded with the hecticness of life when you're growing up and becoming an adult. Um, it's only in this past year or so, and I'm in my, my 30s at this time, um, that I thought about uh, my visit to the repair shop and... Um, I asked my father of its status, you know, to ask, like, what exactly happened to it. Turns out someone else did take it over quite a while back, but, um, that person was not in the family, so it may be impossible to get any more information about it. Um, I've even, uh, tried to see if I can search for something similar, uh, using Google Maps to see if anything's around, but, you know, like, given how long ago it was, I highly doubt that it would even exist anymore. Um, and who knows what happened to those machines. Um, I just certainly hope that they didn't get, uh, trashed or anything, because it would be kind of a shame. A lot of those were, like, relics from the 70s and 80s and, like, early 90s, so who knows. But, you know, it, those kind of things happen. Um, although Sonny passed away, my grandfather... Uh, his love of hobbies and arcades was shared with my father and me. And in the 90s, like in the early 90s, we visited many arcades um, between like when we stayed in, uh, when we lived in North Carolina and, and Kentucky. And there were some pretty good ones that I remember, um, as well as any other states around that region we may have visited. But after we moved to Washington, I'd say like 2002, early 2003, uh, that dwindled quite a bit, but so was the life of arcades in general, I do believe. They were much harder to come by, uh, and it was just more convenient to stay at home and play games rather than travel to locations where they survived, but barely. That being said, I didn't exactly stop going to arcades as I moved around quite a bit in my early 20s. Visiting the rare arcade was a novelty. And uh, it was just a feel-good experience, especially when I was getting through the roughest points in my life. And when I finally met my romantic partner in California, 
I visited the arcades I knew about more frequently since it was fun to share an experience like that with someone I was really close to, even if we had plenty of games at home to play. Uh, and at those arcades, if the cabinet selection was crap, we'd spend most of our time um, competing in skee-ball or those fast-paced uh, basketball games where they keep the score. Um, but many of those places became neglected after a while. There wasn't much a social atmosphere in them, um, other than the occasional young couple or a single parent bringing their kids in for some quick games. Um, and then a few years after I was in California for a bit, I uh, moved back to Washington uh, and had my partner here. And uh, it was pretty much the same deal with the few classic arcades that stuck around. Uh, they had dirty environments, machines sitting around in disrepair, um, just extremely young children running about. And if you're a young adult without kids, you kind of stuck out like a sore thumb in these places. So I started limiting my trips to those, uh, these kind of arcades going on in my 30s. However, in the uh, past four years or so, there's been a sort of revival of the arcade scene, which seems to go along with a massive interest in uh, retro gaming. And I, I blame the gaming industry past the PS3 era, despite there being quite a few games, um, quite a few good games coming out of the, uh, the PS3 and the PS4 um, generation. But I blame the, the industry past the PS3 era for turning out all these like cinematic focused AAA titles with terrible gameplay. Um, for people starting to delve more into like any games that have like a retro aesthetic or retro style mechanics and uh, getting into collecting gaming relics of the pl of the uh, past and for like a lot of these uh, retro gaming stores with the uh, old games in them popping up. For the arcades, there's been a couple of new ones popping up to cater to this revived interest, um, but they're far from perfect. I will say though that there's definitely a lot of heart that go into them and uh, it's got to be hard trying to keep up with maintaining the machines or dealing with the hodgepodge mix of people that come in uh, that may or may not have a passion for gaming and might just want to have a place to screw around in but um, often how well these places um, go uh, might be entirely dependent on the location that they open up in. Um, but despite the situation being hit and miss, knowing the great interests that the younger um, generation at this moment have in the market for indie games and adults sharing their love of retro games and arcades, I think the new stuff popping up, um, trying to make it right now, might have a chance to stick around for quite some time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bidja Memories. If you like the podcast and want to hear more personal tales of gaming past, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel for related content. Feel free to suggest topics for this podcast series as well. Have a great day and enjoy gaming.